Okay, so we'll explore some sounds today with the new beads for mutable instruments. As you can see, I have nothing set, so this will mostly be from scratch. If you want only the sounds, um, there will be a link in the description to a video with only the sounds from this session without me talking. Um, but let's get right into it. We will start with a hopefully nice sequence. I will use the voltage block for Maleko for this. So I will randomize channel 8 and I will also randomize channel 7 but I will set channel 7 to run also randomly so it will jump between the steps so we have one steady sequence and one uh, something a bit more random and I will use a switch to switch between those sequences I have here the disting and um, set to a switch algorithm so let's use both sequences I will take two cables um, the steady sequence and the somewhat more random sequence. Let's also drive the voltage block with the MOOC slicer from Befaco. Um, it has a clock output that I use often to, or, uh, <coughs> sorry, or as my master clock. So now it's running. You can see how it's jumping between the steps. And now we need something to trigger the switch and we can use the voltage block also for this. Um, so I will use sequence six and I will set only its first step to be all the way up. If we go to sequence six, you can see this. So only the first step will be up, will uh, send voltage out. And this will be what will trigger the trigger. So with each cycle of the voltage block, it will send out a trigger or a gate or positive voltage to sequence or to switch between those sequences. So let's send this to the trigger input in this case of the disting. And I will send this, uh, is it enough? No, I will send this a signal from the switch to the harmonic for quantization. This is the quantizer from Instruo. And as our voice, um, I will use the TSL also from Instruo. So I will send the root output from the harmonic to the volt per octave input of the TSL. And now I will want to use two different uh, waveforms. I will use the pulse and the fold uh, outputs and I will sort of mix them um, with the freak from Vult, which is in this case is a stereo low pass filter. So because it's stereo, I can use both signals. So this will be the pulse output to the left channel and the fold to the right channel, something like this. And from there, let's see if this is enough. From there, it will go to bids. And Beads has a nice feature that will auto-level the input gain. Um, so let's do this quickly. I will just hold here this button. This is the quality button. And now you can see that it adjusted the gain. And this will go, let's take two of those here. Uh, this will go to the output. I'm using the Expert Sleepers ES9. So this is the sequence. I'm gonna have a filter here. This is all the way dry. We can also add some movement to the TSL with a planer from Intelligel, so we can modulate the folding and the pulse width. So let's do this with planar. We can also record this modulation. So I will use output A to the pulse width CV and output B to the fold CV. So now with the joystick I can do this. And I can also record the movement. Something like this. So now I recorded this modulation. Okay, now again, this is nothing special. But we will use now beads to turn this into hopefully something nicer, a nice texture maybe. 
So let's start with taking the um, wet all the way up. So now this is only the signal from beads. And the seed function, this button here is on by default, so it will generate grains internally or by itself. Um, and together with the density control, we can uh, change this behavior. So to the left, it will generate a constant stream of grains. You can also sync this with the clock if you want. To the right, it will generate something a bit more random. You can change the length of the grains. So again, this is nothing special, but an interesting feature of beads is the ability to generate a sort of a burst of grains when turning seed off just by clicking it once. So now it will not generate grains by itself. You can see it's doing nothing. But it will generate grains only when I hold this button. And we can also do this with a gate. So as long as a, an incoming gate in the seed input is high, grains will be generated. So again, we can create sort of uh, um, grain, bursts of grains. So let's use, I will use another longer cable. I will use the common output from the MOOC slicer. This will output the CV according to those faders here or sliders. This will go to the seed input and I will run also the MOOC slicer. And now I can turn, let's say, step one up and let's say six or so. Right, so now we get a burst of grains that I can control the rate of only according to those steps. We can also do something like this, actually. We can take step uh, gate seven from the MOOC slicer and send it back into itself to the reset input and get only a seven step sequence. And now we have a burst of grains that is with the sequence. So if I bring in the dry signal a bit, We get a more interesting sequence. And we can play this also. Change this. Change the rate. And of course, add reverb. We can change again the envelope of the grain so we can make it something a bit smoother. Just to add a bit more interest to the sequence. Or a reverse ramp, so it sounds like it's a reversed grain. We can also modulate this internally, so Beads has internal modulation that we can activate by turning the attenuators when nothing is connected to the CV inputs. And actually they are not called attenuverters, they are called attenu-randomizers, because they will add randomization to the uh, parameter internally. You can also randomize the length of the grain or the size just to add some more movement.
So it turns a somewhat a somewhat boring sequence. This is the sequence like before to something a bit more. Interesting. We can add another voice to this with the Basimilus, for example. So if I take the fifth output of Harmonic, this will be the pitch. And I can randomize sequence 5 from the voltage block. This will be our trigger. Yes, yes, yes. This will be our trigger to the Basimilus. And now let's do something like this. Let's send the Basimilus to another filter, <clears throat> another Freak. And from Freak, we will go to the Imitor Versio from Noise Engineering, which is also a delay. And from there, Opalach, Opalach, that was the mic. I just need more longer cables. From there, we can go to the Desmodus Versio, which is the reverb from noise engineering and from there to the output. Let's see if it's long enough. Yeah, one and two. So here I have a kalimba, you can see it has a line output. And thanks to the auto gain of beads, I don't need to amplify this kalimba, I can send it directly to the um, beads input, and it will auto um, adjust the level of the input gain. So I can just play it. And now I can record this kalimba into beads with using the freeze function. So if I play a bit, And I hit freeze. Now this kalimba was recorded into the buffer of beads. So if I take the wet and dry all the way up, you can hear that we have the kalimba recorded. And with the time knob, I can scan through this recording. I can scan through this buffer. And this will happen according to the density knob or the density control, so how uh, the grains will be generated, how many randomly or not randomly. And also the grain size. So if I take the size down, You can get really nice time stretching effect playing the playing the recording back slowly with the time knob. If I uh, turn the density knob to the left, it's even more more noticeable. So we can really time stretch this sample and we can do this also with external and external signal, something like an LFO, for example. So I have here Rampage from, uh, from Befaco. I can set one of its functions to cycle. So we have basically a cycling function, which is 
uh, sort of an LFO. Let's have a nice long uh, rise. And now this I can use to scan through this sample, through this recording with the time knob, time control. And again, adjusting the size and the density. Now you can hear I'm scanning through this. Maybe even slower. Scanning through the recording and we have a really nice time stretching effect. Of course we can add reverb to this. We can also change the pitch of the grains. In this case, I don't like the result so much, but we can turn it up. Actually, it's not so bad. We can take it down also. Maybe somewhere here it was nice, like an octave up. Maybe not so much. So let's turn it back to the center. So now we have this um, recording of the kalimba playing back and beads doesn't have to be at the end of the chain so we can send it through some processing. For example, I can send it to a filter. In this case, I have here the Vogue filter selected, which is an MS-20 emul emulation, the MS-20 filter emulation. So let's send this to the to Freak, to this Vogue filter. And from there, we can go, if I will find the cables, from there we can go to the Mimeophone, for example, to add some delay and reverb. So again, the be uh, beads doesn't have to be at the end of the chain. Let's take it from here to the mixer. And we can process the sound. We can process this recording. Let's add some Mimeophone magic, some Halo. And now with this Vogue filter, I can add drive and overdrive this signal as well. sound will change according to the density so how many grains are playing or being generated to their size smaller grains bigger brain uh, brains <laughs> bigger grains and also to this LFO that I'm using to scan through this recording so this will control the time stretching Something I really like doing is resampling. So I'm going to take this recording before the Mimeophone. I'm going to take, uh, take this recording and record it again with the Morphogen. So I'm just going to record a bit. Uh, recording a few seconds and then playing it back in all sorts of ways. Um, I really enjoy resampling. We can let, um, let it play an octave up, an octave down. Let's see what happens. So this was the uh, this was the left signal. Okay. So now let's listen. You know what? Let's take the morphogen through the the smodus versio through the reverb from noise engineering, just in case we need some reverb. And this <clears throat> sorry, this will go to the. What? 
By the way, we can also change the um, quality of beads. So um, now it's in the highest quality. But if you go to the lowest quality, there are four different levels, we can get this really nice tape effect just by clicking this button here. The red mode is this nice um, tape effect sort of uh, uh, mode. It will add even more character to the sound. Okay, so now we have the recording on Morphogen. Let's take it maybe all the way up. What we can do, we can set quite a long, let's take it down, quite a long um, decay on the reverb here, on the Desmodus Versio, and then just bring it in a bit. If nothing is patched into the inputs of beads and it's not uh, frozen, it's not in freeze mode, it will go into a uh, wavetable mode. So it has internal wavetables similar, I believe, to the ones from Platts. So this can act as a whole voice by itself. Uh, let's listen to this for a second. So you can hear the wavetable. With the feedback, we can change the banks. And with the time, we can change or, or scan through the wavetable. So again, nothing in the inputs and it's not frozen. After about 10 seconds, it will go into this wavetable mode. And now it can act as a whole voice by itself because now it's all the way dry. If I take it all the way wet, it will process this wavetable so I can start generating grains. And then I have control over the envelope decay or length. And of course, I can also med uh, modulate this internally with the Atenu randomizers. I can also control the envelope shape, so some, from something more plucky to something a bit smoother. And I can also use the Atenu randomizers to randomize or modulate the scanning. We can add some reverb. And it will track also one volt per octave through the pitch input, and we can also randomize the pitch. If we want, for now I will leave it. Maybe take it down. Okay, now something interesting we can do, we can clock this with an external clock signal with an external trigger and use it really as a whole voice with envelope, with an envelope with reverb, um, internal VCA, whatever you want to call it. So we take the clock, I will take the clock output from the MOOC slicer and send it to the seed input. And now when I turn the density all the way to the left, we basically get it triggered with the clock. 
or I can divide this clock by turning it more and more to the center. And something really interesting is if we turn it all the way to the right, we get again the full clock. But the more we turn it to the center, it will add probability to this clock, something um, similar to branches or how it's working, one of the modes on marbles. So now we have this clock more um, with probability. So we have a full voice here, a wavetable that we can change. So let's do something like this. Let's do something like this. Let's, let's try and create something out of it. Let's take it out from the mixer and I will send it to the DLD, the 4MS uh, dual looping delay. This we will get out of the way and I will I will sync this uh, delay, the DLD. Let's drive the MOOC slicer and the all gate output will go to the ping input. So now it will be synced with the rhythm. And I will take two more cables. And this will go to the output. And here and here. So now we get something with a bit delay. We can activate the reverse functions with the individual gates from the MOOC slicer. So let's say gate one will trigger the reverse on the left channel and let's say gate four will trigger the reverse on the right channel. Let's take it down actually. Also here we can change the, the quality. Make it something a bit more uh, rough. And now what we can do, we can modulate, for example, the reverb. So sometimes we will have more reverb and less reverb, and also modulate the feedback, which is the, the bank of the wavetable. So what we will do, we will do this. We will use, I will use the common output of the MOOC slicer to drive the voltage block. And I will turn on every other slide. So this will be the clock. It will be basically divided by two. And now I will use channel eight. I will randomize it and maybe also let it run or set it to run randomly. So we have more or less a random, a random sequence. And I will use here a cable if I can get it. And now have a look here, I hope you can see this. There is a light here on the feedback. With this button I can change the destination of this CV input. So now it's for the feedback, now it's for the wet and dry, and now it's for the reverb. So now this will modulate the reverb. But I can also route it, the same one I can also route also to the feedback by holding this button and turning the knob. So now we're modulating the reverb and the bank, the wavetable bank. So 
again wavetable mode it can be a whole voice let's do let's add another voice to this let's add a kick drum from the basimilus so i will randomize channel 7 and i hope you will get something interesting if not we will randomize it again this will trigger the basimilus and let's send the basimilus already to the what should we do let's send it first of all to a filter to freak Again, in this case, a stereo Lopez filter. From there, we'll send it to the Mimeophone. Yes, I'm sending a kick to a delay. And from there, we'll send it to the yes 9 we can do we can use a um, planer to control to control once maybe output a output a will open the filter and also the y the y axis will open the mimeophone the wet also do I can split this signal and then send it once to the opala once to the oh what have I done this is not good once to the feedback also and I kick the camera of course I can send it one once to the feedback and also to the wet so let's do this let's take this here this is the dry dry dry, dry and wet and the repeats or the feedback Yes. A very nice macro control. Controller. And again, change here a few things. Okay, so here I have a piano recorded on beads, it sounds like this. Funny enough it's going um, through microcell for some reverb, microcell is a clouds clone and clouds is the original texture synthesizer. So this is more or less the the recording and it's also, I'm also randomizing here the scanning, the time, which we scan through the recording. Now I'm sending it through microcell for some reverb, I'm not using the reverb, the internal reverb, because I'm using a mono signal here. And why am I using a mono signal? Because there is a really nice feature on beads that we can get the triggers from the grains, and I will explain it in a second, out of the right output you can see I have it unpatched for now it's coming from the right output you just activate it uh, activate it by holding this button here and clicking the seed button and now every time a grain is being generated by the, in, by the internal uh, grain generator <laughs> of beads it will output a trigger together with the grain now here I have the density to the right which means that it will generate the grains randomly so basically what we get is a random um, trigger random clock even if you will 
that is perfect for generative patches or just fully random patches. Um, so this is something we can use. So I'm going to use this um, triggers to trigger or to run the voltage block and you can see that it's being triggered. I have here a um, sequence already, a random sequence. So now for example, if I take it, let's take the reverb out for a second. If I turn this to the left, let's take the grain side also down. So you can see with each grain we get a trigger that is driving the sequencer. And again, if I turn it to the right, we get random triggers. Which are again perfect for generative patches or uh, random sequences. Let's bring back the reverb. And now I'm going to use this sequence to trigger another voice which will be triggered together with the grains of uh, beads. So what I will do, I will send this uh, random sequence, I'm sorry for the mess of cables here, I need to find a solution. But uh, I'm going to send this to uh, Harmonig. Harmonig is going to quantize this random sequence. And this I will send, maybe the root I will take to the Basimilus, let's say. And also the, I don't want a white cable, also the trigger. This one is okay. The gate output will trigger the Basimilus and let's send the Basimilus again through a filter. I'm sending it again through Freak, not just for filtering, but also for level control. I find that the Basimilus is uh, really, really um, powerful and louder than, uh, more powerful and louder than all of my other voices here. So this is going to Freak and maybe from there we can go to... And again, in the background, you just hear this piano loop which beads is granulizing and I'm using the triggers to we will, we will hear it in a second I hope to generate another sequence together with those grains which is quite 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 nice from the I'm sending it to the imitor versio the delay from uh, noise engineering from there to the Desmodus Versio for some reverb. And from there it will go to the output. So let's say three or four. Already we can hear something. So we get another, another random sequence. We can bring in and out with the filter. And again, this, this will be triggered. This will be controlled by the triggers coming out of beads according to the grain. So if I turn it up, we will hear chaos. If I turn it down, you will get really a pause sequence and in the background always this piano is playing by the way if I turn the shape not the shape the length of the grains the size it's called here if I turn it to the left after a certain point, it will start playing them back in reverse, which is also quite cool. So we have another sequence. We can add even another one. Let's take the fifth output of uh, Harmonig and send it to the TSL. And I will send two signals, two waves, maybe the, let's say the, okay, let's go with the pulse and the fold again. This will go to A, 
uh, the poles to A and the fold to B. And now I will take those two outputs A and B. Again, if I can get me a cable here. Okay, so now I will take A to the left input of Magneto and B to the right input of Magneto so I can pen them and also bring them in and out. I have here Magneto already set with a nice delay, very cool. Okay, so now this will go to the output. Another voice, you know what? Let's go with the mimeophone as a voice. So we will send nothing to its inputs. I just want to say it again. Everything, all of the triggers are coming from beads. From the grain generator, the seeding of the grains. Again, again, it's perfect for generative patches. Okay, so mimeophone, nothing in the inputs, sweat all the way up. Let's see what we get. Okay, last patch for today, we will have a look at beads as a delay. It can also act as a delay. So what I have here, I have a sequence coming from the voltage block. It will sequence as soon as I connect the trigger input. It will sequence the bassimulus, which is going to beads. This is the sequence, uh, I'm modulating the decay. And I'm also sequencing the pitch and the triggers, all from the voltage block. For now the sound is all the way dry. If I start taking the dry signal, the wet signal up, we again have the grain generation. But if I take the size, the grain size, all the way to the right, it will act as a delay. You can hear it already. And now with the density, I can change density and time. Actually, I can change the delay times and I can add feedback. I can change the envelope of the decay, it's a, basically a decayed a grain. Add some more feedback. You can also freeze it. Create all sorts of glitches. And I can also, I can also 
sync it with the clock. So again, I'm using the MOOC slicer as my main clock. So I'll take the all gates output to the seed input. And now as you can hear, it will be synced with the clock. By the way, density to the left will have a one tap delay. And this will go also quite to crazy ranges. And to the right, it will be a multi-tap delay. And of course, we can add also reverb. Of course, we can change also the different qualities. And this will change also the delay times. This is nice. So you can create all sorts of glitches also with the freeze. Okay, let's add another voice to this. I have here two more sequences uh, set on the voltage block. Let's send um, the second sequence to the um, Harmonig. And now I'm, I'm going to send all four outputs of Harmonig to Syke. Syke has four, also from his true, has four volt per octave inputs. And it has basically four so oscillators. So we can have a nice chord. So this will be one. Two and two more, three and four, so we'll get a four note chord. And I have already a sequence sort of set here. And Psyche is also an internal VCA, as you can see here, that we can also control. So I have the first sequence set with a trigger sequence, sort of, that will trigger size also from Instruo. And this will open the internal VCA of Psyche. And let's send this to a filter. I will use, <coughs> sorry, I will use again Freak. Again, stereo low pass. And let's send it also to some reverb. So this will go to the this modus versio. Let's see if this can reach it. Yes, let's do something like this. Just for fun. Okay, and now let's take this to the output and see what we get. is a delay really interesting let's add even another voice wait a minute let's do this again okay let's add another voice a sort of a bass what i will do is i will send the tsl i will go with the square wave or the pulse wave to another low pass filter in this case it will be just a mono one and from there no we'll use it as a stereo actually as a stereo one, so from there it will go to the mixer. It will be 
Rodrigues. And to add some movement, I will use the MOOC slicer, the common output of the MOOC slicer, which is basically a sequencer in this case, to the cutoff point. So now we can do... Okay, there's a lot more to explore with beads. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.